Hello, hello. My name is Walter Schultz. I'm the president of Shannon and have been since the company started. We're still here in uh, business. Uh, why am I on this boat? Uh, I'm not on this boat to pitch it. This boat, by the way, is not for sale. What I am on this boat, the reason I'm on this boat is maybe just to prove a point even to myself. This boat sank. Uh, boat yard screwed up down in the Chesapeake, blah, 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 went to rising. They put the boat in the water and sank. The water uh, was up to my knees, over the cushion. Everything was floating. One of the tanks unknowingly had been compromised. And in this water was diesel fuel all over the place. Uh, boat smelled. You can't believe what this thing looked like. All right. I got the brain wave when, after we brought the boat up. That, I wanted to see how and what we could do for something in a serious condition. All right. We're not, I don't do this kind of work anymore, by the way. I'm into uh, electric hydrofoils, all right. not building these kind of boats anymore. I haven't built a boat like this since 2015. Uh, it all has to do with my boatyard days, paid for expensive education. Uh, down in the New York area, thus the accent. And to pay for this education, I worked in boatyards and I learned a lot. I learned nothing in school, learned everything in my boatyards. The thing I saw is that when boats were 20, 30, 40 years old, mostly they were wood and they needed to have rehab or upgraded or whatever, damaged from accidents, you had to be able to get at this stuff. All right, so I saw a boat and I was doing deliveries up in Boston that was built in 1945, fiberglass boat for the Coast Guard, well, for the military during the war, and I went into the Coast Guard service. That was a 30-year-old boat, and I made a big impression because I knew then fiberglass was going to be around for at least 30 years, all right? These things weren't going to disintegrate like wood boats. There was no rot. Uh, thus... It made such an impression on me that when I went to design and build boats for myself, I was fixated on what the hell happens to this thing 20 or 30 years uh, later. Now, the perversity of my life put me to business where nobody cared about anything beyond a 12 month warranty. Mm. All right, so here we are. Uh, so the point I'm trying to make is that everything here as best I could, all right, is accessible. Tanks come out, the tanks come up because 20 years on a fuel tank, that's the end of its useful life, all right? You have to replace them, all right? Sometimes there's a major repairs or routine stuff on the engine. You have to be able to get, get to it. You also have to be able to get that engine and it has to come out of this companion way, all right? The tanks, I had to design a whole boat around tanks fuel tanks, water tanks, that actually could fit through this companion, and on and on and on. Try not to bore you with this. But it was a fixation. And I had my accountants and bookkeepers all chirping about, you know, my fixation with that instead of maybe profitability at some points. So here we are. I'll try a very short video, as short as I can make it. Um, we're talking into this little camera. And I don't do this professionally, that's for sure. Thank God. We, I'll walk you through very, very quickly on why a Shannon is different than any other boat of this vintage. A lot of nice boats out there, folks, but this is different, all right? And hopefully, hopefully, we could show you the Shannon difference. That's what Bill Ramos, uh, the broker here, has been with me for decades, is what he's always trying to pitch me. There is a difference. It may not be of interest to you, but there's a difference. We'll start with the engine accessibility. Okay, let's take a look at a 22-year-old engine. This boat was built in 1999, and we used it for the San Francisco Boat Show. The goal here, to me bringing this boat back up, was to make it look like the San Francisco Boat Show 22 years or three years ago, whatever it is now, um, you know, could I do it? It was a vested interest and blah, blah. Uh, 
But nevertheless, that's what you're going to be seeing is a 22-year-old boat that was ghastly uh, damaged, seawater and uh, diesel fuel everywhere, everywhere. All right. Uh, here's a 22-year-old engine right here. It's a Westerby. Uh, I know it's a Westerby because it's red. Uh, it's 50 years old. Uh, 50 years old. It's 50 horsepower. 50 horsepower. And uh, this engine has to come out. It had to come out. So it could clean it up. It has to come up and it go through the companionway, which meant I had to design this companionway opening and along and atop so this engine could come out with just a forklift truck or a small crane without a million dollar operation. And it does. And we'll show you that. All right, folks, you saw the, uh, the engine trick and how it comes out and uh, how it comes out through the companionway. By the way, there's a generator uh, in this boat. Also comes right out of a uh, cockpit seat and designed around a generator coming in and out. It's no big deal. What is a big deal? What well, is a big deal? And the tanks I'm standing over. Uh, I really don't have the words that can uh, explain how much time and effort all well, the interiors designed it around tank removal all right, that was going to happen 20 years from now. That's a, how crazy I am. Of course, if I wasn't crazy, I wouldn't be in a boat business. But nevertheless, that happened. And here I am all these years later, 22 years later or whatever, and proving a point. That's why I'm up doing this uh, video. But right down here, right below us, we're standing over the tanks. And on most boats, you are. All right. The trick is, how do you get the tanks out after 20 years? Because the tanks will go bad in 20 years, especially fuel tanks. Especially fuel tanks will go bad. How do you get them out, all right? And how do you get them out without an ax and chainsaw and dynamite and sawing a whole boat apart? Because they're underneath this galley module right here. All right, right here, I'm standing right over a fuel tank. Oh, by the way, this is solid wood, all right? All, everywhere you look on this boat and any channel, all right, it's solid. There's no veneer, there's no wallpaper in here, all right? Because if there was, this boat would be in a landfill right now because once the diesel fuel gets into that stuff, it's gone, it's paper thick. They put wallpaper down on cabin soles. Looks like this, but it's not, all right? It's paper thin, paper thin. This is all solid wood and it's all put together, by the way, with screws, no nails. There's no nails on any shank. No way, because they work loose and everything falls apart after five years, never mind 10 or 20 or 30. All right. So this all comes up and I've got this design for boat yards. This is a ship piece right here. All right. It's the, the key to how does this all come up when you pop these out. It doesn't look it. I know it because I've had boat yard people tell me no way. This, these modules all come up. You'll see that in a minute. Uh, and expose the tanks. The tanks come up and, and have to fit through this companionway again, which has trapped me my whole life. Right? The width, the height, the tanks have to come out this way. That's how it's done. All right, let me, let me show you this real quick, all right? So we don't take too, too long. The electric wires, this electric panel has all the breakers, everybody has that, all right? But, you know, uh, right here, you know, it's all color-coded, it looks real pretty. It looks real pretty at a boat show. But this is where everybody gets an opportunity to do some serious cheating to save money, especially production boat builders. They use automotive wire, all right? On all Sharons, it's tinned copper. And I won't go into it now. There's a big difference, certainly a big difference in price. All right. So you can have all pretty wires and look and the wires are junk. They're made for cars, made for cars, lowest common denominator, not boats, not boats. Uh, so all these wires and all the wiring in this boat and why this boat is not the chainsaw man is that all the wiring is up here, all right, right here. Uh, right under the deck, outside, all accessible. There's little covering boards that hide it, it's, but they're all accessible. If these wires would have been run like everybody else does, down in the bilge, all right, this boat, we would not be here with a video camera, all right, because the end connections on these wires, 
It's not the plastic around the wires, it's the end connections. All go to hell in a handbasket very quickly with water infiltration, special or partial sinking like this boat had. All right, so here we are, all pretty, pretty, everybody's got pretty, pretty. Tin copper wire. And uh, here we go. Let's show you the next uh, big feature of uh, Shannon construction. Guys, uh, take us a little side trip here for a minute. Uh, I see that the guys put this draw. Uh, it's called the name draw. Nobody knows this exists. Never appeared anywhere in any advertising or promotion. This was strictly for us. Strictly for us. I mentioned earlier that I was fixated on these boats being around for 20 years, and 30 years, 50 years, 100 years. Who knows with fiberglass how long these boats can last if they're built properly. Uh, so we signed our work, all right? So that future generations, long after we're dead, uh, you know, will pull a drawer out in a boat and turn it over and uh, say, hey, here's the guys that have built this boat. Might be cursing us for some stuff that they don't like, but nevertheless, uh, they're gonna know. So this name drawer right here has the owner's name, when we built it, and a whole crew that actually got to work on a boat. And uh, it would turned out to be a good employee uh, incentive to have their name on a boat, on a boat that's gonna go around the world to set Guinness records and blah, blah, blah. Uh, name draw. Uh, nobody knows about it, and this is the first time I've ever put it on a video. While I'm here, just happen to be here above the draw. Uh, ports. All right. Yeah. Ventilation, they all open, blah, blah, blah. And boy, do you need it on a boat. I don't care what anybody says. But they're bolted on, and they come right out. They're not fixed windows. I don't do fixed windows, never did, all right? Because 20 years later, 30 years later, bedding goes bad. I don't care who built the boat, all right? If it's 20 years old or more, tow rails, handrails, cleats, who knows what, are gonna start leaking because the bedding just dries up. It's a miracle that we were even able to get bedding that lasted 20 years, uh, but we did. But it's all so we had to run around all over the place uh rebetting stuff on on this boat uh and you would i don't care what boat it is you'd have to do that but more important while i'm standing here because it just came to me is the fact that ventilation boats it's real complicated i won't bore you kill brain cells with this uh but humidity and condensation in a boat is a nightmare it's like the iced tea glass with the water running on the outside of an iced tea glass or a glass of beer or whatever. All right. What we have, what we've got is we've got ceilings. Everything's separated from the hull all over the place and try to keep it away from fiberglass to keep the differential and temperatures down. You know, but this is not tagged right to the roof. All right. There's a half inch air space everywhere in this boat. And what we did is just we glass battens in and we fast. Everything is spaced. All right, to allow that condensation to dissipate. All right, and it's important. It sounds like no deal, especially uh, when you're at a boat show or you're just casually looking at boats, or used boats, brokerage boats, whatever. But it's a big deal because when you close this boat up on a rainy day and everything, you close in a locker. When you take them out, you feel like uh, you're living in a doorway with uh, uh, a bottle of Ripple in your hand. You know, ventilation. Ventilation is good, everything bolted, and the deck bolts for those tow rails outside, everywhere, are all accessible. Uh, I'll show you on one of the overhead uh, 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 fittings that we have. Here's the access uh, all over the place, all right? These are the bolts for some deck, piece of deck hardware. I don't know what it is standing at, all right? But if they, he closes in with that camera, you can see that there's a space, half inch space. And you can get that piece of deck hardware off without cutting down everything. Uh, when, you know, these are fiberglass, by the way, uh, custom made by us. Uh, and everywhere in throughout this boat, all right, wherever you see, you know, a screw that looks, that fits a screwdriver, fits a screwdriver. It's some place you can get to or have to get to someday, all right? As opposed to a thing that looks like this, 
all right, which is called a bung. It's a wood plug, and behind that's a screw, all right. You don't have to, if you see, if it's bunged, you don't have to get to it. If the screw surface is, you're looking at it, you need to get to it someday, somewhere. Might make a boatyard guy very, very happy uh, if he knew that. We try to inform boatyards. We're talking to them all the time on Shannon's, by the way. That's a whole service that we have. I don't care how many boat owners have had involved and people I never met. We got boats all over the world. All right. That's something we, we do and still support every boat I've ever built. Well, that's it. That's enough of me talking into this uh, little camera. Just let me leave you with the fact that, uh, you know, I, I, besides doing it for myself, doing the boat, I did this video. Bill Ramos, the broker here, has been with me for decades. He knows more about these boats than I do. So if you are inclined to look at a Shannon, you Shannon, I like to call it brokerage, it's used, uh, boat, uh, you want to talk to Bill. We have the production orders on every boat that we built. All the details, drawings, everything uh, that went into this boat. Built this boat for Kathy and Dave Schiff 22 years ago. And uh, we have that all in one place uh, for people interested in uh, buying used uh, Shannons. And uh, just call. And the other thing is, you know, I mentioned, I may have mentioned, you know, the service. Boats all over the world. Boat yards call us, uh, and we tell them how to get the tanks out, or how to get a cleat, or a windlass out, or whatever it is, engine out, it doesn't matter. You know, We've had the same telephone number since 1975, and there's been somebody, without exception, by the way, without exception, there's been somebody answering that telephone uh, every day, and certainly we monitor it seven days a week in case people really get in a jam uh, and have an accident or a big, big, catastrophe that phone is monitored same phone number uh you know 40 years now or more whatever the hell it is uh so don't hesitate to call thanks for taking the time to watch this video